Well, Music City has been sharing the stage with NHL's current and future stars all week for both of the awards and the draft page. Martin, alongside the one and the only Mr. Tony Brar. And Tony, as the draft wraps up this week, we look ahead to free agency coming in just a couple days. And speaking of sharing the stage, I'm pleased to be sharing the stage for your first NHL draft. Congratulations to you as well, Paige. And of course, day two. Kickstarted with a big trade. Kyler Yamamoto and Clem Costin are shipped out to Detroit. Of course, a cap dump for Ken Holland. Listen, this is year five of a five-year contract for the president of hockey operations and general manager here in Edmonton. And the salary cap since he began his tenure has only gone up $2 million. There's $81.5 million in the summer of 2019, only $83.5 million this summer. Uh, we do expect a significant raise next year, maybe upwards of $5 million, so getting up to 88.5. But the reality is you have to make tough decisions, and that's an exact quote that Ken Holland had in his post-draft co press conference in uh, describing why he had to move. Kyler Yamamoto said he liked the player, of course, a former first-round pick for Edmonton. Of course, when he first busted onto the scene, he had 26 points in 27 games on the line with Leon Dreisaitl and Ryan Nugent Hopkins. But in a cap world, you have to make those tough decisions. Very well-liked guy in the room. I know there was a lot of positivity that number 56 brought to that locker room, but the Oilers need some cap space. And right now, as of tonight, as of Thursday night, they currently sit at about $8.5 million heading into free agency on Saturday with some important decisions looming on important restricted free agents. And of course, best of luck to both Kyler Yamamoto yeah. and Clem Costin. And as we do look ahead to Saturday, like you're saying, free agency day, what do you think that the Oilers are essentially now looking for? Yeah, the biggest thing is making sure that the dialogue and the conversations are continuing with, of course, Ryan McLeod and Evan Bouchard. Ryan McLeod last season, he had no arbitration right so he didn't really have a lot of leverage going into those conversations uh, and negotiations which is a big reason why he signed a one-year deal just south of nine hundred thousand dollars so he's ex expecting a significant raise there of course a third line center a very important role on this team behind McDavid and Dreisaitl or Nugent Hopkins depending on who you have in that number two pivot but the big one is Evan Bouchard and Ken Holland was very transparent today saying that it has to be a bridge deal Bouchard's camp knows it, the Oilers know it, now it's just about figuring out how many years, maybe two or three years, and what the dollar figure may look like because the Oilers definitely have to shore up the right side of their depth chart. Not only in the top six, of course, we have Evander Kane, Connor McDavid, Zach Hyman, Leon Dreisaitl, and Ryan Nugent Hopkins occupying five of those six spots. So there's a little bit of a window there which will open up competition, but the biggest thing is the right side on the back end. There's an influx of players, left-handed shot, left side defenseman on the back end. Now there was conversations today that Ken Holland had that Philip Broberg might have to slot in on the right side just to make it work. Of course you have Darnell Nurse, you have Matthias Ekholm, you have Brett Kulak on the left hand side. So maybe a slight opening for a young guy like Philip Broberg to step in, maybe get some elevated minutes and get a little bit more experience in October and November. But in a perfect world, and we don't live in a perfect world, the orders shore, shore up the right side, both up front and on the back end when July 1st hits. And when we spoke with Ken Holland earlier this week, he was explaining that it essentially feels a bit like a puzzle, just looking for those extra yeah. little pieces to really be able to perfect the lineup that he currently has, doing a lot of work, of course, later in the season, this past season. Now, a quick word on Matthias Janmark. Yeah, Matthias Janmark is obviously a player that the coaching staff and Ken Holland covet. And... He did confirm that he met with Matthias Janmark's agent today in Nashville. That dialogue is continuing and open. I believe that Matthias Janmark also wants to stay in Edmonton, but it has to be at the right price for the Edmonton Oilers. We've already talked about the cap situation right now. It has to come at a team-friendly deal. Uh, I would expect a one- or two-year deal if Matthias Janmark gets done. Of course, played some... Pretty coveted minutes on the penalty kill and at 5-on-5 five five down the stretch. And, of course, we will have all of the updates coming straight to you over these next couple days. A lot, I'm sure, to be yeah. a little bit busy over the next couple of days right yeah. here on Oilers TV. Can't wait.